Yo, what is going on guys? Troy Addison here, Superhuman You, and I am so excited to share today's video. I'm gonna take you through the Zac Efron 5% body fat blueprint. I'm gonna give you his exact regimen that he did for the 12 week period leading up to his shirtless scenes in the movie Baywatch. So part one of the video, I'm gonna go through his exact workout plan and the six things that he did for 12 weeks leading up to his shirtless scenes for the movie Baywatch. And then part two is gonna be the most fun. I'm gonna take you in my kitchen. Now, about one month before filming the movie Baywatch, Zac Efron went on a really intense diet plan. So he actually was on this crazy specific diet plan where he was very low carb, he ate a ton of greens, a ton of uh, like grass-fed protein sources. I'm gonna show you meal by meal exactly how he ate. <laughs> I'm actually very familiar with his Hollywood trainer, Patrick Murphy. So, a little backstory on me, I lived in Los Angeles, I actually used to be an actor for about a year and a half, and I've been friends with different Hollywood, uh, Hollywood trainers and different celebrity transformation coaches, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how Hollywood stars get so ripped in a period of just 12 weeks. So if you're currently in 10 to 12% body fat, and it's your goal this summer to get to 5% body fat, to look exactly how Zac Efron looked in those shirtless scenes in the movie Baywatch, this is gonna be your blueprint. So take some careful notes. I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give you guys a ton of information in this video. So take some really careful notes. Definitely pay attention to part two of the meal plan because like I said, I'm gonna show you meal by meal. I'm actually gonna cook it and prepare it myself and give you his exact macros that he ate for the one month leading up to his shirtless scenes in the movie Baywatch. So let's dive right into it. Guys, so I just snuck behind this little bar and I'm gonna break down these six things that Zac Efron did for the 12 weeks before filming his shirtless scenes in the movie Baywatch. Now, most of this is gonna pertain to his workouts, but a few of these are gonna be little diet hacks, little X factors on how you can get really lean, shredded, and aesthetic. Now, the Zac Efron physique is all about having a lot of lean muscle mass for your body type and being very lean. Now, this is a very similar physique that we've seen Ryan Reynolds have in the movie Blade Trinity, that we've seen Brad Pitt have in the movie Fight Club, and it is very attainable, guys. If you just stay consistent and stay with these tips, you guys are gonna have a very similar physique, I promise you. So, step number one for the eight weeks, because his diet plan actually changes a bit for the four weeks before, but four weeks, uh, so let's, let's think of it in terms of um, like 12 weeks out. So from 12 weeks out to four weeks out, step one is Zac Efron did no bulking or no cutting. He was exactly 200 calories above maintenance. Now being just 200 calories above maintenance is a really powerful number because what it allows you to do is it allows you to build muscle mass, have positive protein synthesis, be in an optimal muscle building state without packing on any body fat whatsoever. Now when your body's building muscle mass, and you're not packing on any body fat, what happens is your metabolism starts here, and all of a sudden after like, you know, six, eight weeks, your metabolism is here because you have more lean muscle mass on your frame, and the more lean muscle mass you have on your frame, the faster your metabolism is. And then when you combine this with the shredding diet that he did for the four weeks prior, it's no wonder that he got so ripped and shredded. So absolutely no bulking or cutting, just be at about 200 calories above maintenance. Okay, so step number two is his exact workout split. Now this is my personal favorite workout split. I actually do this with a lot of clients on the action figure plan, and it's just such a fun way to train. So Zac Efron was on a push-pull legs rest, push-pull legs rest split. So what that means is he trained six times per week, he trained every single muscle group twice per week, but he would do about three different muscle groups in every single workout. So the push workout is gonna be chest, shoulders, and triceps. Now, a lot of compound exercises obviously go into that. Um, step number three, I'm gonna break down the types of exercises and the training techniques that he implemented, but let's just break down the split. So push means you're hitting chest, shoulders, and triceps. Now pulling, means that you're hitting back, so you're doing like your heavy back pulling, and you're hitting your lats, and you're also hitting your biceps and your traps. And then legs, of course, means that you're hitting your quads, your calves, and your hamstrings. So what this allows you to do is you get to work out your entire body in a three, uh, like in three different workouts. You're essentially training your entire body, so you can hit this twice per week, still have a rest day, and train every single muscle group twice per week. 
All right, so now that we figured out that he has a push-pull leg split, I wanna break this down for you guys and tell you precisely the training techniques and the rep ranges and how he exactly lifted because this is so crucial because from the week, from like week 12 out to uh, four weeks out, he put on a lot of size and this is really crucial when it comes to boosting your metabolism and getting really shredded because like I said, the more lean muscle mass you have on your frame, the faster that metabolism is gonna be churning and the more fat you're gonna lose when you go on a deficit and start cutting like he did for the four weeks prior to his shirtless scenes. Now, what he did is, at the very start of all of the workouts, he focused on compound exercise strength in the six to eight repetition range. And um, Zach Efron and his trainer, Patrick Murphy, they made an emphasis of increasing the strength by about five to 10 pounds every single one of these workouts on the key compound lifts. So part one of the workout is, say for instance, it's a push workout. He's going heavy on the barbell bench press, the barbell incline bench press, the standing overhead press, the dumbbell shoulder press. And then, for instance, if he's doing triceps, he's putting a lot of overhead and emphasis on the weighted dips. The pull workouts, he focused on getting stronger on the deadlift, on the seated row, on the T-bar row, all of the major compound lifts pulling. And then of course legs, he did not skip leg day, he did heavy squats, he did heavy dumbbell walking lunges and heavy dumbbell step ups because even if like, for instance, you don't care what your legs look like, which I mean, I think most guys do at this point, because nobody wants to have chicken legs, but say for instance you didn't care, say you only cared about how your upper body looks, well, by skipping leg day, you're actually hurting your upper body because you're gonna have less human growth hormone, you're gonna have less testosterone, less circulating anabolic hormones in your bloodstream. So part one was all about increasing his compound strength, and then part two is what I'm really excited to share with you guys, he and his trainer love to do advanced training techniques. So a few of the ones that he did, they're the exact same ones that I implement in my action figure program and in Science of Abs. He did rest pause overload, FST7, eccentric overload, and a lot of drop sets and supersets. So FST7 basically means that you're doing seven sets in the eight to 12 repetition range. And these types of advanced training techniques work really well on um, not the compound list, but like the machines and the shapers. So for instance, I'll do FST7 with say something like the dumbbell pullover, and then doing different drop sets and supersets is gonna allow you to put more volume and time under tension on your muscles. So step one is the workouts obviously focusing on the compound strength, and then step two, all about maximizing time under tension because not only to build a lot of muscle mass quickly and not and not pack on any body fat. It takes two different things happening. You gotta get stronger and you gotta break down your muscles with time under tension. So doing things like FST7 and drop sets and supersets, that maximizes the amount of time under tension that your muscles are performing the exercise. So say for instance, when you're doing FST7, you have very short rest times. Your time under tension is about 30 to 45 seconds. This gives your, uh, your muscles much different overload than just going really heavy on the bench press. So if you want that really aesthetic and lean look like Zac Efron has in the movie Baywatch, you have got to drill the time under tension for the second portion of the workout. All right guys, so step four of six, so important. Daily ab training. Zac Efron trained his abs every single day. Now that doesn't mean you have to go train your abs for 30, 40 minutes. What him and his trainer did was they have little five to seven minute ab workouts. And I also find this is the best way to train your abs. You can even do this at the start or end of your workout or you can uh, completely separate your ab training at another point in your day. Now, if you take my 100% free six pack suicide quiz in the description below, I'm gonna give you 100% free access to the Science of Abs exercise database. It's my goal over the next couple months to make it the world's largest abdominal exercise database. So just take the free quiz and you're gonna get instant access to the database. You guys are gonna have a ton of different abdominal exercises to do. Now, Zach Efron was always doing different abdominal exercises, training his obliques, training his lower abs, his middle abs, his upper abs. It's so crucial that you train your abs with a lot of different forms of exercise because you're actually engaging your abs every single day. Even when you're sitting in a chair, your abs are like indirectly engaged. So it's a much different muscle group than say your chest or your quads or your back where you can train your abs every single day and see amazing results. And in fact, if you guys are trying to optimize your aesthetics, optimize how shredded and just how ripped you look this summer, I cannot recommend training abs enough. Step five of six is his cardio plan. Now he didn't do traditional cardio, what him and his trainer did is they incorporated a lot of fast twitch cardio. They did high intensity interval training, 
They did lots of dynamic movements because keep in mind, Baywatch was a really intense movie where he's jumping, he's sprinting, he's running all around. So to prepare him and to maximize his fat loss and his aesthetics, they incorporated high intensity interval training. Now, I have been a huge fan of high intensity interval training ever since I met the Olympic gold medal sprinter Justin Gatlin. In fact, he was my inspiration for creating the Science of Apps program just to help people understand how amazing high intensity interval training and just simply running sprints is for fat loss. And it's no surprise that his celebrity trainer had Zach do a very similar part of your regimen. So you only need to do this, uh, like, if you're running sprint intervals, you only need to do it two to three times every single week. And in fact, on this channel, um, in a couple weeks, I'm going to start breaking down a ton of different high intensity interval training workouts for fat loss. But keep your workouts for cardio short and intense. Do lots of things like plyometrics and sprint intervals. You guys are going to maximize your aesthetics and your fat loss. Alright guys, so step number six and then we're going to go in my kitchen. I'm going to break down his exact macros and show you meal by meal precisely what he ate for the four weeks before filming the shirtless scenes so you guys can get shredded with a life. Now, Step six, kind of common sense, but I guarantee you, you guys aren't doing it consistently. Zac Efron and his trainer made sure that he slept eight to nine hours every single night while he was putting on those lean gains. And he also made sure that he drank one and a half gallons of water and had a lot of fresh juiced veggies. So he had a ton of microgreens and a ton of water in his system at all times. So the little trick here is, the more water you drink, the more it's gonna keep you full. So obviously just being at a slight 200 calorie, being only 200 calories over his maintenance level allowed him to maximize the amount of muscle without storing any fat, but he also got hungry. So just drinking more water not only keeps you healthy, powers you through your workouts, but it's gonna keep you more full. So I highly recommend you guys monitor your water intake. And then he had a ton of microgreens. Uh, he has a juicer and he would juice fresh spinach and kale and celery all the time, literally no calories. Pure nutrition helps you maximize your muscle building and fat loss hormones. And then sleeping eight to nine hours a night is gonna lower your cortisol and help your body just stay on point and recover optimally. So let's go in my kitchen. I'm gonna walk this way. Got about a half mile walk and I'm gonna break down meal by meal his Baywatch diet plan. All right guys, so let's get this party started. I'm gonna break down meal by meal the Zac Efron diet plan. Now keep in mind, this is not his meal plan that he followed to put on size. This is his meal plan to shred up for the final four weeks right before he was filming his shirtless scenes in Baywatch. So his macros were about 23, 2400, about 200 calories over maintenance for the, uh, like the first stage of the diet. Now the macros get to about 1700, they get really low, and I'm gonna break down meal by meal exactly how he did it. Now keep in mind, he ate a little bit differently every single day. Obviously, the guy is a rich and famous celebrity, but these are precisely his macros. And if you guys, if you guys weigh around 165, 170, these are going to be ideal shredding macros for you. And obviously, just adjust accordingly to your weight. Now, meal number one was breakfast. What he did is he had typically an omelet with one organic egg, mostly egg whites, and then that's asparagus, uh, pan seared, and a little bit of extra virgin coconut oil and also uh, a little bit of grilled chicken is in there as well. So this is a very high protein meal, 40 grams of protein, 15 grams of carbs, and 10 grams of fat. Now, as far as liquids go, he did not consume any liquid calories, so tons of water. And then to keep himself full between meals, he had lots of sparkling water, and then also lots of green tea. Green tea is an awesome fat burner. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> so the pre-workout snack, he would typically consume some healthy, slow digesting, uh, some healthy fats and some slow digesting protein. So celery and some peanut butter on there or he would do almond butter, just some type of uh, low macro total. And keep in mind, this is a very low carbohydrate shredding diet. So he did uh, 10 grams protein, 15 gram carbs and 20 grams fat in this meal. Obviously, uh, most of the fat coming from the peanut butter, the celery has a very trace amount of carbs, but very low calories. So this is a good high energy, high protein, high fat snack before you work out. Now for pre-workout, he would always consume a little bit of caffeine. I don't have the exact like pre-workout that he took or anything like that, but I did get information that he took about 300 milligrams of caffeine just to really supercharge his workout intensity while he was on a caloric deficit. So. Obviously, we got Alpha Shredder, has 300 milligrams of caffeine, and a bunch of other really powerful fat burning ingredients that will give you a similar effect as coffee. Actually, much better because it's gonna have a lot of other compounds besides just the caffeine. 
Now, post-workout. Well, first of all, the first stage of post-workout is, and by the way, I, I don't know what kind of protein powder he, t he uh, took. It's completely irrelevant. But this is Quest Protein, but I do know that he had about 30 grams of protein and just a couple grams of carbs in his post-workout uh, protein. Just pick anything that's like a white isolate. And then the post-workout meal, once again, is low carb. So this is 95% grass-fed beef. He kept all of his uh, meats free range and organic and grass-fed. So this is 95% grass-fed beef, about six ounces. These are actually, that's not a sweet potato, even though it looks like it. These are grilled carrots. And then this is grilled or pan seared asparagus and a little bit of extra virgin coconut oil. So the macros on this are 40 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs, and 10 grams of fat. Now, about three hours later, he will have an early dinner. And once again, full of veggies and high quality protein. So I thought this was pretty cool. I saw this at the store. Um, he, he had a lot of variety and he always ate with a ton of volume. So tons of veggies. Now, he did things like cauliflower, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, green beans, asparagus, tons of veggies like that. So this is actually a cauliflower rice medley with a little bit of peas and carrots mixed in. And then of course we got more asparagus and we got four grilled chicken tenders. So very clean meal. 35 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs, and five grams of fat. And keep in mind, throughout the day, he's always drinking water. He's drinking his carbonated water. He's drinking his green tea. He's putting a ton of fluid in his body. And I've been on a very similar diet for stretches of my life, and you really don't get hungry. Once you build momentum, you see how shredded you're getting in the mirror every single day, and you're drinking so many fluids. You start to feel really amazing and energetic, and you, you do kind of stop craving food. In fact, Zach Efron said he stopped craving a lot of junk food around week two of this. And then the late night meal, some uh, organic hard boiled eggs, two or three of them. And then he'd have some type of healthy nuts. So these are Brazil nuts, so he'd switch off between Brazil nuts, almonds, and uh, also walnuts. So high fat, high protein, 17 grams of protein, 17 grams of fat, and two grams of carbs. So, and then uh, last but not least is nighttime recovery supplements. So he would take, I don't, once again, he's not affiliated with any supplement company or anything, but I do know from his trainer's regimen that he would take glutamine, he would take more branch chain amino acids, and he would take ZMA. Now, the reason why I designed Alpha Dreams is because Alpha Dreams has ZMA, it has L-glutamine, and it also has leucine, the most powerful amino acid in it. It's also got a bunch of other awesome recovery ingredients in there. So just make sure you take some high quality form of nighttime recovery, especially if you're on a caloric deficit. If you guys are shredding, you gotta keep the amino acids and the glutamine coming into your system. Now, the daily macros for him, keep in mind he's about 175 pounds, was very, very low. I mean, 172 grams of protein, 65 grams of fat, 80 grams of carbs, total calories, 1,600. So this is pretty low. He was at like 16, 1,700 calories for about 30 days. And then the three days uh, right before he was filming his shirtless scenes, what he did is he carved up. Now, another thing to factor in, he also did carbohydrate cycling. So about once every seven to 10 days, he would have a high carbohydrate day just to kind of reset his metabolism. Uh, definitely gonna cover that in an upcoming video because it's one of my favorite dieting strategies. So um, I just want to give you guys a really detailed breakdown on the Zac Efron workout and diet plan. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Links to everything I mentioned in the description below. And I will see you guys on the next video.